Uh, to my right, we have representatives of the Writers Guild, the WGA, uh, in their shirts. Um, and to my left, we have representatives of the, of, of the AMPTP, or the and we just want to take this opportunity, by the way, really quickly, just to say how it's a real honor today to be in this, this august body, uh, the Sam Rayburn building, and in front of you know, some of our nation's most esteemed legislators, legislators, excuse me. Um, although we are a little bit disappointed, we saw Charlie Wilson's war last night, and uh, we're a little disappointed at the lack of strippers that we've seen here. So, uh, no hot tub, and I will get to that. <laughs> Honored judges, worthy opponents, we're here today to debate a resolution. Resolved. Creative, socially awkward types, hereafter referred to as writers, deserve to be compensated for their work no matter where that work is used. According to Bear Stearns, if the studios gave in to every single one of the, of the WGA's current fiscal demands, it would cost them less than 1% of their total revenues. For instance, it would cost Paramount a total of $4.66 million to give the writers everything we're asking for. That's half the amount it takes to get Reese Witherspoon into a movie. Now, I ask you, what's more important to a movie? A script or half of Reese Witherspoon? <laughs> Which half? <laughs> content producers produce content. The studios distribute that content. Now, when you impose a Hegelian dialectic upon the current labor situation, what you wind up with is a kind of floating signifier representing the contract, in which the contract is a sort of panopticon. And by panopticon, I mean Foucault's conception of the panopticon, of course, not Bentham's uh, idea of the process of Now, as my favorite professor, uh, Simon Blackburn, told me when I was reading philosophy at Cambridge, morality is not intentionality, but it's not mere anti utilitarianism either. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I went to Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> and don't let their Aquaman t-shirts and their terrible posture fool you. These writers are rich. Fact, the average WGA writer makes more than a volunteer fireman, a volunteer crossing guard, and a volunteer combined. In fact, even adjusted for inflation, these writers make more than Jesus did for his carpentry. They think they're better than Jesus. Their words are mine. Uh, I think we can agree that our deal is both fair-ish and reasonable-esque. <laughs> we have reevaluated our position on the internet. We now accept that it exists. And therefore, we are going to increase our offer on residual payments to writers from nothing to next to nothing. It is nearly nothing adjacent. So writers, the ball is in your court. We didn't actually become a ball, did we? No. <laughs> okay, first question is for the WGA. How do you answer the producer's argument that it's too soon to tell whether or not the internet will be profitable? <laughs> well, Didi, a great man once said, Viacom will double its revenues this year from digital. And that man was Abraham uh, Sumner Redstone, <laughs> chairman of Viacom. Yes, but what you're forgetting is that is revenue, not profit. The internet is expensive. I pay Verizon $30 a month. Yeah. Seriously, uh, just, just be honest, guys. I mean, how much money did you make from the internet last year? I don't recall. <laughs> I also don't recall. I do not recall. That is outrageous. You can't, you can't come before Congress and say, I don't recall. I mean, what kind of person would even do that? AMPTP, you'll respond 30 seconds. All right, well, let's get one thing straight. We never said that you can't make money off of the internet. We said it's too soon to discover whether we can make money off the internet. I mean, the internet, let's admit it, is a baby, and babies don't make money. What we wanted was a three-year window in which we could study and evaluate whether the internet would be profitable, but the writers wouldn't give that to us. So we had to come up with the most conservative economic estimate of how much money we could make off the internet. Zero. WGA, 15 seconds for your response. Like, oh, our turn? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just buying the Simpsons movie in my iPhone. 10 bucks. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Are humans necessary? Hmm. Good question. And to answer that question, 
Let me pose another question. Is this America? <laughs> Simple question, is this America? This is America. This is America, then no. <laughs> you want to know why the Chinese are beating the Chinese made pants off of us right now? <laughs> it's because they're not afraid to let their nine-year-olds work 16 hours a day in the uh, inhalable lead plants. If we give in to these union writers and all their demands, they're going to make TV more expensive. That means it's going to go offshore. And before you know it, we'll be watching According to Mao and Foot Binding with the Stars. <laughs> and I'm also louder. <laughs> also, I have a substantive critique of our nation's foreign policy that is best understood when shouted incoherently in a hearing about something else. <laughs> I have no cause to advocate. I am just a lonely man who is not held enough as a child. To stand out your distraction is distracting from my distraction. I stood up first. I want security to get this guy out of here. Oh, great. This guy now they're going to think we're a bunch of freaks. Yeah, no, you get out.